Hello everyone, it's the end of November, and it's time once again to check in on Xbox Live Indie Games. We're looking at the games that came out over the past couple of weeks, starting from November the 9th, ending at November the 22nd, 2014. Eight games that came out over the course of those two weeks, so few more than we've had in these past number of videos. We're starting off with Survival Games Season 1, the first installment of what's surely going to be a lengthy line of successful products on Xblig. Let's start it and, oh, let's take a look at the tutorial, see what it's all about. I mean, we can see what the game looks like. It's very cubic, has a very Minecraft-ish look to it, oh, that, that Minecraft-ish look that has been used in so many fine, fine products on Xbox Live Indie Games. Well, you know, we've established that before. If you want your game to sell on this service, that's what that's what the game has to look like. That's what people are interested in. That and zombies. Maybe we'll get some zombies in this. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, since we're in the tutorial mode, so I'm guessing that's why it says health is at 200%. We're going to learn how to play The Hunger Games. I think... I think that's trademark. That's probably why this game is called the Survival Games instead. Okay, here we go. We're going. All right. Hello, thank you. What do you have for us? What, I, I can see it. Welcome to Survival Games. I'm pressing button. Okay, here we go. It, the tutorial goes at its own pace, I suppose. I can't press buttons to make it go any faster. All right, press o X to open the door. It's easy enough. I could see that tantalizing forest outside, but we're stuck in here in the tutorial. All right. Some very fairly standard first-person controls so far. We're learning our how to move around. How to maneuver the world of survival games season one. No crafting or building or mining as of yet. But those are probably the advanced things. Okay, let's see, we can run. I don't know why it needs to go to a black screen to tell us that. And the font seems a little small. I don't know. I mean, yeah, we're in 720p and all that, but look at the numbers by health, hunger, stamina, and sleep. You kind of have to squint a little bit, maybe, or maybe lean in a kind of close to your TV to see what those say. Okay, we're going to run. Going to click the L thumbstick to sprint. I never liked having to click the thumbsticks to, to do something in the game. But that does seem to be kind of a, uh, a standard oh, standard method of running in games now. What does that say? Where do these secret areas go to? I don't know. Survival Games Season 1, that's why I'm playing the tutorial. I'm sure you know, and you're just teasing me, wondering what wonderful secrets could be lying outside. That looks like lava outside. Hmm. Okay. Our hunger gets lower, our stamina stops regenerating. We now will be taught how to cook meat and to eat. Okay. Meat from the chest. Is that a chest? Kind of, I guess it's kind of a box. Okay, there we go. Let's see. What kind of meat... Tutorial, you're blocking the flavor text. We don't know what kind of meat this is. It could be ham, could be bacon. Okay, let's put it there. All right, press X to cook food. All right, there I am. Mm, if I press X here, I'll eat the thing. I don't want to do that yet. You know, Tutorial, you're kind of behind me at this point. I need you to get to the point where how do I put the, the meat on the stove? Because I'm pressing X, nothing's cooking. I guess I need to move this down to my active bar down here, maybe? Oh, there we go. Let's cook it now. Ah, yes. I'm holding the cooked meat. Uh, is that our trigger? Because that looks like a, a trigger. I think it says RT on it. Yes, that is how I eat the food. 
I, you know, I appreciate that the game runs smoothly, you know? Smooth frame rate, it seems like, so far at least. Uh, but, you know, you could... You know, basic things like making sure the font is readable is, counts for a lot. Oh, light sources. It's nighttime. The only light come from the stars above. What kind of worlds orbit those stars? Are they also worlds in which nothing exists except cubes? We'll never know. Open the chest. Um, so this is dark. Is there a chest right in front of me? Let's hope there is. Oh, I think I saw something come up for a second there. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of a flaw to have me search for, search for the chest in a pitch black room. I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, I keep losing that just as soon as it comes up. No, I don't have the torch yet. I have to open the chest. Where's the chest? I'm standing by the sign and looking around, and I saw the prompt to press X. did come up a few times, but it vanishes just as soon as it comes up. And I'm assuming that... Oh, there we go. C clicked on... Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, at least we had a small victory. We found the chest and got the torch. So I guess these are our, our characters. I mean, I know the guy on the right is who we were controlling. Uh, on the left appears to be Laura Croft. I didn't know she was making a cameo in this game. And it looks like that we have a cubic dog as well. Well, I mean, this trial certainly makes me want to experience the survival games. I don't know, maybe, maybe the tutorial should have gone long enough to let us know what the main idea of the game is. It says that we have a... well, the main bullet point here is multiplayer. So I'm guessing it's not really a game where the primary thing is to build up your home or something. Probably it's combat. Okay, I can't see the bullet points anymore because time has expired. So that's Survival Game Season 1. I'm sure there's a lot more of a game to it besides what we just saw in the tutorial. Um, I know that uh, you can cook food. I know that there are dark areas, and I know there's a torch. So at least that's something. It's survival Game Season 1. You know, I would, I would expect that if you're making a series and you're just starting off now with Season 1, maybe this, maybe the platform of choice is not Xblig, because who knows if it'll even be around for Season 2 at this point. But that's Survival Game Season 1. Zombie Purge. Like the voiceover just said, the next game is Zombie Purge. In the zombie apocalypse, everyone has guns and strikes poses with the guns. Let's play the game. Okay, I could choose my character. We'll go with the default, I think. Because it's time to rock and roll. Now, I hope you're feeling nostalgic, because Zombie Purge is... exploit condensed, let's say. Because it's one of these games. Yep. The old exploit standby of a double joystick, single screen, zombie shooter. Those zombie, that zombie seems more interested in smacking my hay bales than did to seem come after me. So I guess it's supposed to be multiplayer. I guess the point is a competition to see who can get the highest score. The game plays what you'd expect it to play like. I'm using the left stick to look around. I'm using the right stick to aim, and I'm using the right trigger to shoot. And zombies are very slowly walking towards me. Yep. This is Xbox Live Indie Games. I mean, sometimes you forget about what really matters, you know? You forget about what type of games you really want to see from a platform like this. And then you remember, oh yeah, Dual stick zombie shooters. That's what this system is built on. My base does not regenerate between levels, it looks like. Maybe when it gets destroyed all uh, gets destroyed altogether, maybe I lose? I don't know. It doesn't really seem like I need the base. Because it's just a pile of hay, really.
Not much of a soundtrack. Just kind of outdoorsy sounds. The relaxing night sounds that we're hearing belie the intensity and the, the stress that comes about with protecting yourself and your property from a wave of zombies. I'm sure that's deliberate. It's very artistic. A deliberate stylistic choice. Well, this has been Zombie Purge. Doesn't look like it's really changing much from this. I, I, I have a feeling, just somehow I have a feeling, that Zombie Purge does not hold any surprises for us. It's Zombie Purge, available on Xbox Live Indie Games. Next up, it's the never-ending game. That may sound like a familiar title, because one of the best all-time best-selling games on Xplig was called The Impossible Game. And this is kind of like that. Once it loads up, we'll see. It's... Yeah, okay, here we go. We're moving up towards the top of the screen. Well, we never actually move, it just scrolls vertically. We get points every time we jump to the other side of the screen. But we can't do it too much, we have to make sure that we avoid the spikes. You wouldn't think a spike would hurt very much when you're kind of just sliding into the side of it. Um, uh, but no, it'll kill you. It will. Just as, just as easily as if you were impaled on the top of it. Yeah, this is pretty much seems like all there is to it. Again, I don't really expect there to be too much different from what we're seeing right here. If you, if you feel like, I guess you would call it an endless runner. Though we're not actually running, we're sort of just sliding upwards. It amounts to the same thing. If you want that, well, then you probably already have played the Impossible Game. But if you wanted a new one... I mean, now there's the never-ending game. It's here, for you! Actually, the Impossible game had more variety in that there were platforms to jump on, as opposed to what this is so far, which has just been going up a straight hallway. So that's the never-ending game. I mean, it's just this. It's never-ending in the sense that you could keep doing this if you wanted, but it is ending in the sense that you can just go back to the desktop, which is probably what you'll end up doing. Next up is Fright Light. Does this font look familiar? It should, because we've played a couple games by this same developer recently on Xplig. If you haven't recognized it yet, I'm sure you will in a second. Just as soon as it loads all of the scary images... It's almost done loading them. Okay, here we go. You've recognized it by now. We have a security system. We're looking at cameras on our laptop. We, we can look at this, this door. Broadcast to bring you a startling news story. Now, hold on. Three patients at the Springfield Asylum broke out of their cells just two hours ago. Mudroom? Be warned that these people are strangely dressed and should not be approached. Authorities are trying to find all four of the patients before sunup. Apparently, they have photodermatitis. Mudroom? They are allergic to concentrated light, such as the sun or a flashlight. If you spot these individuals, do not hesitate to call the police and avoid all contact. Well, hold on one moment. Uh, just getting this now. It appears the escaped patients broke into a zoo, and now the main attraction, known as Betty, has been released. It's a four-foot tarantula, and the world's largest. This beast is very dangerous, so if you spot it, Please also call the police. Like the three fugitives, it is also afraid of light, so the police are hoping to catch it by dawn, or it'll go into hiding. The mud room? What is... Anyway, you, you recognize what this is. We can... All right. So let's just show what our controls are. We have, we have our surveillance system. We have... We can look at this door. We can turn our flashlight on, see if anyone's there. Because if you notice, um, there's an X on one of those rooms. That's the room next to our room. We don't actually have a camera there. 
This game, tying in the other games that we've seen from this developer, you might have noticed that it was mentioned that Betty, the world's largest tarantula, is on the loose. So I guess that explains where the tarantula came from in the previous game that we played from them. And my, my mind is just blanking on what those games were called. I remember one of them was called One Night Two Crazies, but then the developer said that's not actually what it was supposed to be called, but he couldn't actually rename the game once it was on Xplig. I think it was supposed to be called Ten Crazy Nights. In the second game, we had to do the bidding of the tarantula. And we kept getting killed by a wolfman. If you remember that, that, that happened. Oh, by the way, I can also... Yeah. Change the batteries in my flashlight. It does not seem like I have a limitation on how many times I can do this. My energy does not run out or anything. I don't seem to have a limited number of batteries. What is the mud room? I can't see in there. That's actually a problem I'm, I'm noticing with a bunch of these camera views. Some of them are well lit, like the rec room. But then you have the bedroom, and I can barely see anything in there. But it's flashing red, so that is handy because it tells me that someone's in there. Uh-oh. Whoever it is, or whatever it is, is on the move. It's in the office right now. Yep. Uh, is that Betty? Could at least say hi. Tell us that she wants us to get something for her, like old times. So, in this game, we cannot move around the house. That was not Betty. That was, uh, just a guy in hockey gear, is what that looked like. So we can't move around the house in this game. We're stuck in our bedroom, or whatever this room is, that has the laptop. And all we can do is just look out our door and shine the flashlight, which scares people and things away. Because as you heard the news reporter say... The light hurts them. So it's a good thing we have this flashlight handy as, as well as an infinite supply of batteries. We really have nothing to worry about, I guess. Just as long as I make sure that I keep checking that door. I let it slip that last time, and we paid the price. Yeah, I don't know why some of these I can't even see what's in there. The laundry room, the mud room, bedroom, the office, stairway. I mean, most of these rooms, the family room, that's just pitch black. Most of these I can't see anything in, so it's a good thing there's flashing text. Betty the Tarantula was seen chasing one of the asylum fugitives out of a local food mart. When police arrived, both had vanished. Residents in that area are warned to keep their doors locked and a flashlight handy to ward off the two intruders. As always, contact the police as soon as you see these assailants. All right, Betty. Are you? Is it time? Are you in here? Let's do this thing. All right, someone's in the basement. So, oh. So we have two intruders this time around. Got to tr keep track of both of them. As far as I could tell, it's a pretty good strategy to just every time, every time the camera flashes and they move around, yep, that's Betty, to just look at the door again. I don't know if there's a reason not to do that. Seems to work okay. What is the mud room? Oh, he's in the mud room, though. He's enjoying the mud in there. And Betty's in the bedroom. All right, so I've, I have tabs on both of them now. Now they're gone. Not there, so I guess I don't have to worry until they move again. Again, I don't know if there's any reason to do anything else besides just this. Making sure that my... Oh, making sure that my batteries are fresh. The police want to thank local residents for sending in tips regarding the four escapees. 
the latest information we have is that one of the four robbed a home improvement store and stole a large axe. Police are searching for the fugitive before he can put the axe to use. All right. Sounds like someone in here now has an axe. Doesn't sound any more deadlier than anything else we've seen, though. I mean, we just die instantly anyway, no matter who comes in here. I don't think they mentioned why we're not closing the door. Maybe we don't have a lock for it. Let's just say that. So the developers of, uh, of these games kind of uh, making a new genre unto themselves. A genre which is basically, let's take pictures around my house and then put them all together in a game of some kind. <laughs> Ah, it's the same guy again, too. We could have at least gotten Betty in here. I'd like to see them expand that genre. How many different genres of games do you think they could make by taking pictures around their house? Oh, we'll never know, because time has expired. Well, that's Fright Light. It's another installment in this unofficial series, whatever it might be called. Maybe they should maybe they should name this series of games because they all kind of seem to tie together. That's Fright Light. Next up on Xbox Live Indie Games, it's Astral War. It's a card game. Though I don't know if it's a children's card game. It's a card game in which the world, the universe, and the entire spiritual plane is on the line. Very high stakes. And we can pick either demons or angels. Uh, we'll, we'll go with angels. Alright, so I guess we should learn how this card game is played. So let's go th to the tutorial and we'll see what it's all about. We can see right off the bat that it is a very uh, plain looking card game. There's a lot of room, I would say, for maybe um, more graphics and audio, perhaps. I'm at the bottom of the screen. My opponent is at the top of the screen, who has the name I Am Your Death, which seems maybe a little presumptuous. My stats are at the bottom bar. The numbers we have to remember are 2 for attack points, 15 for life points, and 5 for mana. Right, he has 3, 15, and I don't see what his mana is. 2. He has 2. My allies are at the rick th of the screen, and my allies are on the left, and they're hidden because that only makes sense. I cannot see my opponent's cards. Alright, I'm going to summon a monster. I'm going to select it. And uh, I, I summon Sir Lancelot to the field in attack mode. I'm in my battle phase. I'm going to select Sir Lancelot. And I'm going to attack the opponent directly. It appears that we can attack on the first turn in this game, which seems kind of odd because my opponent has no way of defending himself. But okay, I'll take the advantage. And I did damage. I took away his attack points for this turn, as well as reducing his life points to 5. Now, my opponent does not have any attack points, which means now I, the player, can attack him directly, and not have to worry about a reprisal. I only have 2 attack points, but, I mean, I might as well do it, just to reduce him down to 3 life points. I like to imagine the real-world version of this being walking around the table and slapping the opponent in the face, but of course, that's not possible on a video game console, so this is the best we can do. Alright, now it's I Am Your Death's turn. He is summoning two monsters, the Myrmidon Warrior and Gladiator number two. We cannot see the Myrmidon Warrior number two, I am sure he's wearing a fancy top hat, if we could see him. They are both weaker than Sir Lancelot, and he's attacking with both of them, and the result is that everyone is going to die. He sacrificed those two monsters to take out my Lancelot, which I guess was worthwhile for him. I guess there was nothing else he could do, but it kind of leaves him in a bad situation because he has no monsters on the field. And now I'm going to select Knight number 24. The first 23 were busy. Knight 24, attack his life points directly! I attacked. 
You know, it, one thing about this game is it's kind of difficult sometimes to move the cursor. Like, for example, if I have him selected on Knight 24, and if I want to select the opponent, I could press up on the D-pad, but nothing happens. What I have to do is press right, which selects me, then press up, which selects the opponent. And I kind of think that's something the developer could spend some time working on, on uh, coming up with maybe more a, more of a natural-feeling cursor, because this is kind of awkward to use. Anyway, now me attack my life opponent's life points directly. I did it. I won the tutorial. I guess that means it's now time to come up uh, to have a real match. Here are the opponents on uh, for the demons. I'm an angel, and apparently the biggest, baddest boss is Myzena. We're going to start from the beginning with Irnan, who is only rated one star. Uh, the coin? I'll select heads. The coin's flip is back, so the opponent plays first. Let's see what he does. He has three attack points, 15 life points. He uses mana to summon vampire number two, which means I'm going to take some damage. Yeah, I think a thing that, I don't know, the, the basic card game might be alright, but a thing this game really needs is some kind of visual or audio feedback as to what's going on, like if something good or bad is happening, or even that my button presses are being registered, because right now I'm just looking at a still screen in which sometimes things happen and sometimes they don't, and uh, I think that's really something that should be worked on. I have a powerful monster in my deck, Ishtar, but I need 30 mana to summon Ishtar, and I only have 5. So, I guess the best I could do right now... I have nothing that can kill the vampire. I'm just gonna have to sacrifice someone to do this. I'll, I'll summon Templar number 3. I'll have to ram my Templar into his vampire. And he died, but the vampire is weakened. Can I attack the monster directly? I don't actually know. Uh, I guess I guess so. Alright, I killed the vampire, but I did lose two life points in doing so, so I don't know if that was worth it. But there didn't seem to be anything else I could really do here. Summoning a succubus, and this is not good for me. I only have six life points. Oh, he actually did not attack me directly. Oh, no, he did. Okay, he did. I did not notice. He just did. Okay. So, the Dark Wind. Come with us to dominate the world. Why not? Sure. So that is Astral War. It's a, a, a card game, like I said, in which the balance of spirituality and all that is at stake. The card, Like I said, the card game itself might not be so bad, but... This really needs something in terms of graphics and sound, which gives you a sense of feedback and a sense that something's happening, because it really doesn't have that right now. But it's a card game on Xbox Live Indie Games. It's Astral War. Next up, it's Dead War. Time for a war with the dead. And if you were guessing it's another zombie game, you're right! You get the prize! What's the prize? You get to watch the demo of Dead War. There's a story in Dead War, unlike Zombie Purge that we saw earlier. In Dead War, we are in a prison. And it looks like that we were on death row. However, on the day that we were scheduled to be executed, something happened. What's going on? Hmm. All right, let's take a look around. The other cells are open for some reason. I don't know. Gasp! A dead man? How mysterious things are so far. Useful. All right. 
So, okay, we got the key to the solitaire. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Things are moving around when I don't want them to. The only weapons we have right now are our fists. The, the original and perhaps most satisfying method of inflicting pain. Why would we use anything else? All right, so we did see that this door was locked. So let's go to our inventory and use the key. Music's not bad so far. Oh, hold on. What's this? Hmm. Don't know if this is referring to us or anyone else. I guess it's us, probably, because this is the same person mentioned again. Yep, and we were uh, sentenced to, de to the death penalty by lethal injection. We found a survivor! Thanks, prison guard. We will take the gun. All right, time to start shooting. And we have to protect the guard because we need him to get out of here. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You can see it. All right, here's some zombies. He can't get out through this, these doors. I'm going to shoot him through the bars because why would I Why would I not do that? Shoot to kill. It's a kill. Uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Rest in peace. Reloading. What are you talking about? You're just, you're not shooting anyone in there. You're you're just standing around. Aim for the head. Well, fortunately, I've already shot all the zombies, so you can just go ahead and open those. If you think it's safe to stay here, I'm not really going to argue with you, but uh, I think I'm going to be heading out using our key card. And I believe it was five, six, three, four. Hmm, some more survivors and some. Oh! There are green zombies that apparently can vomit on us. This will come in handy. Hmm, that's not what we got a key for. Looks like we're gonna have to get a passcode to that door. So, what did we get a key? Oh, that's probably it here. Sure, let's unlock all the cells. This will come and in handy. Yep, yeah, money does come in handy, you're right. All right, so now these are unlocked. They don't know it. We would have to actually just go up and open these things. All right, the dead convict has a laser sight on him. I mean, you can get anything in prison, I guess. Help! Hey, what, what's going on? All right, I guess we've got a... Uh, I don't want to open that one. I don't need to open that one either. I guess uh, we can get some some people to follow us, and we can uh, lead lead them to safety. Can we do multiple at once? Okay, looks like we can. I wonder if that one, that guy has anything on him in there. Waiting. Oh, 
I'm equipped with a knife. I don't really want to be equipped with that, though. I want the... yeah, the pistol. Hmm. Waiting. Okay, there we go. Now it's equipped. I can't seem to shoot it, though, for some reason. Alright, let's get everyone out of here, I guess, first. Oh, no! It was a trap! Alright, you guys better, uh... Better, guys better handle that, because I can't seem to actually attack anything. Be careful. Thanks. Open fire! I don't know... Hmm. Okay, I can attack with the knife. For some reason, I can't seem to do anything with the gun. And I don't know why. It looks like it has ammo. But nothing's happening when I try to shoot it. You're with me. Well, anyway, it seems like this game is a story-based double uh, joystick zombie shooter. Good luck. So it has a bit more to it than the other zombie shooters we've seen in the same <clears throat> same kind of style. And I, I figured we were probably near the end of the demo time limit anyway. So that's Dead War. I don't know, it, the, it looks rough, but it actually seems not bad, aside from that one issue that I had with not being able to shoot the gun for some reason. Don't know what that was about. Maybe it was something obvious that I didn't notice. But that's Dead War on Xbox Live Indie Games. Hey everyone! You ready to play uh, the next banger from 3T Games? The next jewel in the 3T Games crown? Then you're ready for Frankie Stein. Now, how does Frankie Stein play? Does it play like every other game 3T Games has made? Shockingly, no. It actually plays differently. All right, we have to get the body parts, which go into the uh, the machine in the upper right. We have to collect the, the skeleton pieces. Oh, I, we can only collect the ones that flash. And I can't jump, so if I want to get to a higher level, I have to find a trampoline. I'm just going to have to take this hit right here. Yep. And I can jump on that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's get up there. Dodge the boot. I'm taking a lot of hits here. I wasn't going to avoid that anyway. Uh, so I've almost formed this whole entire skeleton up there. Yep. I only have one more. Okay, I see where it is. We move very slowly in Frankie Stein. We are not especially agile or quick, but I've gotten the entire skeleton. I've gotten to the top. I press this. And I have created Frankie Stein. I'm sorry. Frankie Stein's monster is what I have created. We're on level two. Well, at least the music is not ear pierce ear splitting, ear piercing. As 3T Games' music tracks usually are in what we've uh, what we've heard in their previous games. Frankie Stein in this level is already completed, but uh we still need to activate him! There you go, Frankie Stein. Uh, okay, I don't know what the J is. The J apparently transports us across gaps. I don't know how or why it does that. Do we really need to know why? Do we really need to know why when, you know, when we're talking about 3T games? Maybe not. I don't think we really do. It's Frankie Stein. It's the latest on Xbox Live Indie Games from 3T Games. And hey, I'm glad to see them switching things up, changing things around, you know, freshening things up just when their current formula was getting stale. 
We now have Frankie Stein. Let's all thank 3T Games for Frankie Stein. And lastly, this time round with Xbox Live Indie Games, it's time to uncraft them all. This may look familiar to you. You may remember Uncraft Me, and I believe that there was a sequel, Uncraft Me 2. This time round, there are so many women for us to uncraft. Um, these are apparently cameos from the other games from... Uh, what? The Shuriken Games, I think it is? Is that the name of the developer? Yeah, Team Shuriken. That's right. So, there are three that we can, uh, we can get to in the demo. I guess we should probably look at them. It's loading. So, Uncraft Them All plays like the other Uncraft Me games. We play a cube who's running around in a cube world. We have a jetpack that runs out of fuel when we're in the air, but it refuels once we touch ground. It moves smoothly. The music's good. I mean, that's the same thing that I've said for the other Uncraft Me games. Here's some fuel pods. Hold on, I just want to go straight up. Trying to go up too many levels at once. Getting greedy with trying to show off some some pro uncraft them all skills. All right, oh, yeah! and there we go. It's not even an animation this time round to show the ending of the level. We're just seeing a picture from one of their previous games. This time it was uh, Beach Bubbles Chapter Three, the third installment of the uh, critically acclaimed Beach Bubbles series. Don't touch the lava, of course, because we will die. Oh. Yeah! That was a short level. This this uh, being from Temple of Dolgorak, probably one of the, their more well-known titles. It's an adventure game released on Xbox Live Indie Games, like maybe a couple years back, I guess. All right, we got to dodge the buzz saws. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I, I lost. Oh, yeah! And this image from Mystic Forest. These levels seem pretty short, and that's all that we can access in the demo. We could try, you know, we need to buy the full game if we want the others, because the fate of the world is in our hands. Which I don't really get because there was no story at the beginning of this one. There was in the other ones, I believe. But there was no story at all about what it is we're doing here in Uncraft Them All. So I don't know about what this uh, Fate of the World business is. And by the way, hey, it's coming to PC. It's, it's greenlit for a Steam PC release. And I'm sure that you're all very interested in getting this on your PC and on crafting them all for yourself. And it's not just exclusive to Xbox Live Indie Games anymore. You can thank, well, you can say you're welcome to Team Shuriken. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess that's the end of uh, Xbox Live Indie Games for this time round. We had eight games, Survival Games Season 1, Zombie Purge, The Never Ending Game, Fright Light, Astral War, Dead War, Frankie Stein, and Uncraft Them All. Uh... I, I guess the best time I had with any of these games was with Fright Light. I mean, it was a, it's a very simple thing, you know, looking at the surveillance cameras and turning on the flashlight. But I guess it was the best time I had with any of the games uh, for this couple of weeks. We'll be back next time with more Xbox Live Indie Games. The next time there are enough to warrant a video. But uh, this is the new, the new load, the new batch that you can get on your Xbox 360 right now.
That, that's Xbox Live Indie Games for, for this time. I'll see you next time with more. Whenever that is. See you then.